welcome back to The Mom's View. And this is not a mom, as you can figure out. Well, what? don't impose roles on me. <laughs> You're right. Don't judge a book by its cover, but this is a father, John Fugelsang, who is an actor, comedian, um, frequently does a lot of stuff all over network, cable, and now YouTube about <laughs> politics. He was the host of America's Funniest Home Videos. I did that, yes. Which is pretty pretty awesome. <laughs> I was a VH1 VJ. I was killed on CSI. Oh, I, cool. oh my gosh. I got George Harrison to give his last public performance on VH1, and I got Mitt Romney's advisor to call him an Etch-a-Sketch on CNN. So, <laughs> wow. Uh, a lot of Wait, that was TV you, photos. the Etch-a-Sketch? That was me. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay. Jeez. So, yes, I have a pretty schizophrenic resume. But, okay. <laughs> but it's all been leading up to this moment. To this moment. <laughs> on the mom's view. So nothing will top the mom's view. Right? That stuff was just happening. <laughs> what we really want to know about is your newborn son. Well, thank you. Uh, well, sure. Uh, I, I, this is my first time I've ever talked about ha having a baby because normally I get called in to talk about politics and make fun of, of politicians and, <laughs> you know, do silly stuff like that or, or religion or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I became a dad this, this year. Uh, it's appalling. Um, they, they, they're loud, you know, you know this, right? They're loud, oh, yeah. you don't, you oh, don't yeah. sleep. They actually, it's the, in the field manual for enhanced interrogation at Gitmo is babies crying uh, to, to make the Al-Qaeda suspects crack and name names and it works. Um, no, it's, it's, it's pretty wonderful. I never thought I would be a father. Uh, really? I wasn't planning on it and, mm -hmm. and it wasn't anything that I ever thought I'd get. And then I entered a period of my life where uh, everyone I knew started dying. And I, in a very short amount of time, I lost my dad, I lost my best friend, I lost my aunt, my oh. wife's grandmother, both my cats died. Oh, and it just wow. kind of felt like a good time to do something radical. And uh, so, so now, uh, unexpectedly, I'm, I, I have a baby, and I'm hoping to become one of those comedians who talks about diapers and lose all my edge and make a lot of money <laughs> playing cruise ships. <laughs> That, I'm sold. I'm sold. Yeah. Well, I'm thrilled about it. It's actually really wonderful, and, and I, I like, again, I never thought I would I would uh, do it. I'm, I was living in L.A. in a nice big house, and then mm -hmm. I moved three years ago back to my little New York apartment, and suddenly I'm like carrying a baby in a sling around Manhattan. And, uh, awesome. And What's his name, and how old is how old is he now? Uh, his name is Henry Jack, Cute. and he's four months old. He was born on March 12th, so he shares a birthday with Mitt Romney uh, <laughs> and uh, Liza Minnelli <laughs> and Edward Albee and Jack Kerouac and porn star Ron Jeremy. Oh, Which gosh. one of those makes you most happy that he shares a birthday with? Uh, either Mitt Romney or Ron Jeremy. Oh, you know, okay. On the one hand, you've got that giant penis, and on the other hand, you've got Ron Jeremy. So really, it, it covers all bases. Wait, you can cut who that has out, the I'm giant sure. penis? Uh, we're, we're, we're <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's, it's already cut out. Yes. Don't worry. No, I'm, we're, this is, we're keeping this. This is Go Giant <laughs> Penis no, is going to be the title like. of this video. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think it's great because uh, I, I have to make fun of politicians all the time. So it's nice that my, my son has that in common with, with Governor Romney. Yeah. And, and Ron Jeremy, you know, why not? Hey, who, absolutely. Who not? knew he was a Pisces? So, you know, it's fascinating. <laughs> yes. So how is your wife doing with... Uh, she's great. She just went back to her job and she, she returned to her work and... Uh, and you know she loves it. It's uh, she wasn't ever planning on having a child. That's what either. I was going to ask. Was she in the same sort of mind frame about? We don't really it? have a very conventional uh, relationship. We were together a long time before we got married, mm -hmm. about eleven years. And uh, I actually did a one man show off Broadway about how we came to get married. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we finally did it, we did it on leap day, so we only have to acknowledge it every presidential election. <laughs> <cycle. laughs> so we got married on the 29th of February, and uh, and she loves it, and and it's just kind of like uh, you know, it's it's a whole, it, it's kind of nice. To, to wait this long in a relationship to do it because mm -hmm. uh, we know each other pretty well now and so uh, it's 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 really great I don't mind the diaper stuff to, mm -hmm. to my surprise I, I don't really mind the screaming anymore mm -hmm. just wait <laughs> no, no, I really, I really don't. Well, when it's yours, also, it's different than if it's yeah. somebody else's baby. Yeah, I view babies like cats. I like mine, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but no, it's, 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 it's really cool. I mean, we tried to think of like what would be the worst name you could possibly give a baby. <laughs> like, I thought, what's the most horrible name I could give him? <laughs> and I came up with uh, Adolf Judas Kardashian. Um, <laughs> So after that, uh, I named him after uh, Henry Miller, my favorite writer, and Jack was my, my dad's name, and my dad died. Uh, well, we actually, it, it's kind of funny, my, my father died, and, uh, and then we wound up conceiving on a date that I later realized was the first Father's Day after we lost my dad, so. I'm yeah, of the belief definitely. that, you know, one of the reasons I hate politicians is I kind of think that every second of life is a gift mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be taking care of each other and mm -hmm. giving thanks for the time we have and celebrating yes. and having a lot of fun and making sure nobody on earth is suffering 
Instead, we're the opposite of that as a species. Huh. So, you know, I'm a big believer in uh, enjoying the time you get. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I actually stole it from Reader's Digest, but <laughs> well, no, no, we, we, still it better. we like it. I have a question. Um, so you and your wife were together for a long time and had your relationship established and like strong. Did you feel like having a baby affected that at all? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but it, you know. It, it affected it in positive ways too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like we already had a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. We already knew, you know, what we liked and couldn't stand about each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, it just kind of seemed like, just I was ready for something different in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, and it's I could either try cutting my own bangs or I could have a baby. <laughs> so. And by the way, I women watching, if you're baby. depressed, don't cut your own bangs. Okay, <laughs> that's Satan telling you if you're depressed, change something in your life. Don't cut your own bangs when you're depressed, <laughs> ladies. If I can do one thing for the female population, don't cut your own bangs because you're having a bad day. I agree. Thank you. You were saying really funny things about how now that you're a dad, you can't stand bad dudes. Can you elaborate? Well, you know, I, I've always can't stand bad dudes, to tell you uh -huh. the truth. Uh, you know, I think that we, we, we live in a society with a lot of boys, guys, homies, and dudes, not a lot of men. And, uh, you know, I blame most of the world's problems on men, on he arrogant, heterosexual, insecure men. You have to act like beasts just because they're too insecure to be mm -hmm. human. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys in this culture are cut off from their spiritual side. You know, you can talk all the time about how women are, are, are pack animals and how women are all influenced by each other's tastes. Men are 20 times worse. Yeah. 20 times worse than women with the conformity. <laughs> as, as bad as conformity is for women, it's 20 times worse for men because in the case of men, the conformity makes them act like douchebags. Uh -huh. And, you know, Amen. women <laughs> are at least in this culture encouraged to discuss their feelings, mm -hmm. understand their feelings, mm -hmm. put their feelings into words so they might be able to know what's going on in their hearts. Men mm -hmm. think that's weak and want to mm -hmm. bottle that up and then just break stuff when they get in a bad mood. Right. Yeah. And it's so boring. That is so interesting. What do you guys think about you agree? I have to see a lot of nodding. <laughs> Carly, do I, I think the testosterone I'm like, I just hate the whole, like, bros before hoes, like, this bromance thing that they have, like, going on lately. It's just, I, I Well, first know. off, anybody who uses the word bromance is probably bro-dependent. Yeah. All right, keep like... that in mind. And bro-dependency <laughs> is a terrible problem for men. Anyone who says bros before hoes deserves neither. All right? <laughs> I feel like bromance... It makes men emotionally immature and unavailable for women to have. I think that was m my ex-husband and I's greatest problem. He was an athlete, so he's always with the guys, and the guys get together, and I feel like there's some appeal to men about playing games with women. In a sense, it's like the hunt or something, I don't know, and I feel like when he was not in baseball, we had a really good connection because it was really him and I like discovering one another, but when he was in with baseball, he's with the guys and on the road, and you know what I'm saying, like in that lifestyle, and... There's a lot of single men in that, and I think that um, that was one of our marriage's biggest downfalls because he became like a bro. Are like you saying bro. that pro athletes don't make the most faithful husbands? Definitely, <laughs> I am maybe making that claim. No, I mean, they were, that's what But they not are. for NBA stars, ladies. NBA stars yeah, are the most faithful totally men in the world. Totally clean slates. <laughs> no, I just think that lifestyle is set up for failure in serious and true relationships. It's just very hard living that lifestyle. It's they're like they're treated like, as a cattle. The coaches and organizations want to do anything they can to make their athletes bring them in money. It really is like stock. Like, you need alcohol, you need women, yeah, you need They said drugs. the same thing at Penn State, too. <laughs> no. I mean, it's, it's all about the profit and the game. It's, it's, really, and it's yeah. more about the game than the sport. Yeah. So, but there, I mean, but on the other hand, there were really good men that had really good relationships with women, but they worked and they fought for it. But, um, yeah, that was like my, my biggest pet peeve as a guy who was like a pro. How are you going to make him? Jack, like an awesome dude, and not yeah. a. Oh man, I have already decided I'm going to have a female positive, LBGT positive, sex positive, uh, uh, mm -hmm. righteous man that I'm bringing into the world. And you know, I, I, I think he's going to be whoever he wants to be. But I was very lucky. I was raised by people who. Um, who didn't really blend in all that well. And my parents were really not normal people. Uh, they hadn't lived like normal people since the 50s. Uh, their fashion taste had stayed in the 50s. <laughs> I was a little kid in the 70s and 80s with like these plaid checkered pants and buzz haircut and Clark Kent glasses and clip-on boat. My seventh grade cla my class picture was like, you know, Little Almond Brothers and Buddy Holly's inbred cousin. Um, and I was a real freak. Uh, for a long time, and that's hard for a child. Uh, and it wasn't until years later that I realized that whatever makes you not blend in is the thing that's going to make you special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing you've got to follow, because that's where you learn who you are. If you make your life all about blending with the guys, hanging out with the jocks, being one of the gang, you're going to be a really popular, 
boring guy. You're going to be yeah. like every other guy in the book. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a freak, but in many ways I've learned it was a blessing. If I'd been popular, I might have been more of a douchebag than I am now. Um, <laughs> so, so wait, are you saying all popular kids are douchebags? Not at all, not one bit. No, okay. there's some wonderful popular people and, you know, wonderful conforming people. And, I mean, you know, we all have the same frailties and the same propensity to, to, to screw up. But I think that, you know, to get back to your original question of how I'm going to make sure he's a good guy, I can't guarantee it. All I can do is try and be like my dad was. I never saw my mother open a car door. I never saw my mother open a door at all. My dad was very, very old-fashioned that way, which I consider to just be the way men should be. Mm -hmm. Not guys, mm -hmm. the way men should be. And so I intend to have, you know, raise my kid without the same hang-ups my parents had. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like with anything. When you're trying to, trying to you know, be a good person, be your own person in the shadow of your parents, you keep the best and drop the rest. How are you guys dealing, feeling about raising boys? We've talked before about raising girls and the pressures on girls, but this really brings up a great question. I mean... I think for a guy, his biggest example is his father, mm. you know? like Sure. I mean, I can see your son growing up to be a strong, great man. He has a great example. and. Well, bless your low standards. You know? I mean, the greatest... <laughs> the reason why I think men have it tough is, again, they're not encouraged to really understand their feelings or, or talk about their feelings. And I think that that keeps them from being as full a man as they could be. Can you imagine if Martin Luther King or Gandhi uh, or Jesus or John Lennon or, or take any interesting guy who's done something positive in the last you know couple thousand years had sat on who they really were because the guys didn't want to hear it. Right. And the guys that I used to be friends with, that I grew up with, who I loved very much, uh, I realized at a certain point that whenever I tried to be myself, they didn't like it. And I was into theater, and I was doing Shakespeare when I was 12, and they tolerated that. They weren't really into it. They, didn't, they thought it was weird of me. And so I would hide that side of myself around my guy friends. If I was in love with a woman, I would hide the depth of my feeling around my guy friends. They don't want to hear about that. And after a while, you realize, wait, y'all aren't friends. Y'all are pals. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest challenges of adulthood for men and women is separating your friends from your pals. Mm -hmm. Who can you be real with? Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like it starts at a young age when you see a father to his five-year-old who's crying. It's like, come on, don't cry. Like, you're, you're a big boy. Like, mm -hmm. You shouldn't be crying. Then you have the mom that comes in and is like, what's happening? Talk to me. Like, talk about your emotions. And I feel like what you were saying about trying to raise your son into being more open about his emotions. Like, you're also an artist. It's, it seems like artists always are more open about expressing their feelings and everything. Some guys will be more macho yeah. and, like, they'll teach their kids from the beginning to not cry and don't be like a girl and it starts from day one and that's denying your own humanity i mean you can you can you know you need to toughen up everyone does boys girls alike need to toughen up life's a monster and if you're going to be yeah. weak life's going to walk all over you so yeah but you know you and children need to cry that's how they express themselves and children feel emotions very intensely. Yeah. And I mean, then they get to be teenagers and they feel it nuclear intensely. <laughs> and, and you know, remember when you're a teenager and you're in love, it doesn't matter what anyone tells you, you know you're in love and the heart is the only authority that you answer to. Oh, yes. So I, I think that, you know, it's walking a line of like, how are you gonna set the example and guide them? Because you can't control them. Have you seen the tweet from Sapriki06? When he was watching The Bachelorette and really proud of it, mm -hmm. I was like, yay, a guy who's watching the, ba the Bachelorette and who's like crying and telling the world about it. I think that's great. Like my other best friend watches <laughs> The Bachelorette <laughs> and I swear they're not You gay. lost me on that one. I, I, no, I, I, I would smack a man with a, with a bat for watching The Bachelorette. No, but it just shows that some guys can be in touch with their feminine side that a little I bit. That I like, yes, like, that I like. And appreciating that two people could fall in love and watching it and not being like, oh, there's no way I'm ever going to I think it's great that a man can be in touch with his emotional side while watching a completely fake show about a fake relationship. <laughs> yes, that, that does Set up in such, me. like, doves and fireworks. Or, that's one thing we talked about. The Bachelorette's great, and I am in a little agreements of it, but... The things they like set these couples to do, I'm like, who wouldn't fall in love with it? It's amazing. It's, like, it's, it's like the best. I'm, I'm not a fan of those shows at all. I think they're an insult to love. And I think Carly had a really great relationship. relationship coming out of a YouTube Bachelorette series. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I, yep. Don't complain. We, we did do a Bachelorette series on my channel because I yep. wanted to be the first one so to do it. Like, but it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. like set up at all. It really was. And it was hard. I felt emotionally so responsible for these people's feelings that we brought on because mm -hmm. I had such great guys to choose from. And I ended up dating the guy that I did choose who actually lives in Idaho. Okay. He's such a good guy. I dated him for four and a half months. And then he's older and I'm older and we, you know, I've been married before and he was such a gentleman and it was so refreshing to have that. And 
it was hard because it was like we were on different pages of life and religion and kind of where we saw our futures going. Mm -hmm. And even though we had a lot of the same underlying issues that we would have agreed on as parents and a couple, we just felt like they were enough to keep a relationship together. Mm -hmm. And so I had, you know, we both kind of had to make that choice, like ditch a really good guy in hopes of finding maybe a better guy. And But that's that's what love is, right? I mean, yeah. you know, if, it, if, they're, if they're not the right person, people into your life for a reason a season or a lifetime mm -hmm. and sometimes you think it's for a lifetime and it's just for a, a reason yeah and ever we're all a link in somebody's chain and you know he was a part of your story yeah that's great though also. I really appreciate the <laughs> that you've said that you know your dad opened the door for his wife and I think some guys are like well that's like an that's old-fashioned and it's a sexist thing but it's not it's a sign of respect and it's a sign of like a kind act well, I open the door for men too I'm not hitting on them you know? <laughs> I mean it's like yeah. it, it, it's I once had a woman say to me, I hope you're not holding that door because I'm a lady. And oh. I said, no, it's because I'm a gentleman. You know, like, yeah. slam dog biatch, which was great. But, you know, <laughs> it's just, the best. Yes. well, it's just the question of how you're going to conduct yourself in your life. Are you going to live your life to serve other people? Mm -hmm. Are you going to live your life to make someone else's day a little bit easier? Are you going to do mm -hmm. small pieces of courtesy? Are you going to give little bits of love wherever you can give it? Or is it all about you? Yeah. Is it all about your pleasure? Mm -hmm. And is it all about you getting what you want? Because, hey, I'm me and you're just you. So, you know, I, I think that, I mean, and again, at the end of the day, these little acts of courtesy, like holding up in a door, you can, you know, I'm sure Hitler was a great gentleman, but, you know, it, there's, there's bigger things than that and bigger priorities that you have mm -hmm. to make as a man. But I, I do think that uh, it, it all comes down to what's the path you're going to walk. Yeah. Or are you going to live for your community and for other people, or are you going to live for yourself? Yeah. And that's, I think, what the challenge for people raising children is. Mm -hmm. At least I hope to screw up my kid in the perfect way in that sense. Right. So. I heard somewhere, I can't remember where that was, but it was a, a man who was explaining how he's raising his daughter, the, not raising, but treating her like a girlfriend, opening up the door, giving flowers at Valentine's, like being really a gentleman her to the daughter. how to daughter expect a man should treat her. Because yeah. by the time she's older, she's going to want a man that was like her dad. Mm -hmm. And not expect anything less. And I always thought that was nice. Yeah, and if you're if you're a horrible dad to your daughter, she's you know I mean America's douchebag boyfriends need to thank America's horrible dads for making it you're, so yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. It's history true. repeats itself. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I'm just an absent dad. I mean, I think that really, and it doesn't. I you know, I think there we do see it doesn't necessarily have to be a dad. It can be an, um, another really strong father or male figure who comes and de and models that behavior. Oh, yeah. Ideally, you have. You have influences, but of, of course, families that are you know raised by two men or two women, it doesn't mean that just it's great to have all of the different people around. Hopefully, a greater family of mm -hmm. friends well, and, sure. and adults. I mean, and I've to, known mm -hmm. plenty of people who were raised by two women, or, or mm -hmm. I've known a few raised by two men, mm -hmm. and it's like you realize that the parents aren't the only role models a child right. has. Right, of course, and, right. You know, and and you can love your father or mother, but you're always looking at different father and mother right. symbols mm -hmm. as you grow up too. Right. So I was raised by a lot of different people, right. mm -hmm. and some of them. Uh, set me on some wrong paths and some of them right. you know gave me a side of what it is to be a man that my dad wasn't wired to give me mm -hmm. so I, I do believe in that and I've known plenty of kids who were raised by same-sex parents where uh, you know the, I mean those parents got to try twice as hard right or single yeah. parents or single parents fact. single moms were a master race oh John this has been incredible I mean I feel like we need to just have you back and talk about lots of other things anytime it's a pl how often I get to sit on the Bring couch your babies. With yes. four gorgeous women and talk about stuff that doesn't pertain to politics it's <laughs> for me, now so we have some you. serious so political fun. questions to grill you with <laughs> okay. Kaylee go oh, no. <laughs> who are you but no. <laughs> I'm just oh you're just kidding okay. no, I was just kidding I'm ready we actually do have a present for you, though. It's really a present oh, for yes. Henry Jack. I got a present? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's so cute. Of I may have peeked at it. Oh, my. Well, we went to this amazing conference, and this company is doing this clothing. It's this really neat opportunity, this is, but it's... You want me to open it? You pay yes. so much yeah. a month, and then they send you... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have Whittleby. to say the company's Thank name, you. or are we, are they, are yes. we getting any free stuff no, if I yes. say... Yes. The We're... Whittleby Kids Clothing Club. <laughs> That's great. Yes, okay, well, terrific. they are really lovely, and they're so. Oh, would you look at this? How nice is this? I got, I, I got onesies, and I, wow. Cute. Look at that. Uh -huh. This so is our favorite. Cute. Yes. This is, I this mean, is so if we would have looked at it. How kind are you? He's already too big for this too. Well, I'm kind of. Look, he's four months old and twenty pounds. It's disgusting. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's job of the kid. This he's is job of the kid. Can I tell you, like, I, I, when, when so I, I, when my baby was born, like. 
It was right when Rosie O'Donnell's show was canceled on, on the Oprah Network. It was the same week, and I, I wrote to her saying I was really sorry because I helped her with the show a little bit. And she just started saying, give me a street address. When I'm depressed, I go to Baby Gap. I want to, and <laughs> my God, Rosie sent my kids so many beautiful outfits from Baby. This is so oh, adorable. That is so nice. Wow, that is How so fun. cute. And John, you're on YouTube now. Yes, or I am. Or maybe you've always been, but um, now you have a We're one... neighbors now. I was, I, I, the good folks at, uh, at Maker Studios uh, were after me for a while to try and do a, a show for their political channel. And I thought, you know, I, I want to get away from politics, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's that kind of year. And I like to do the kind of thing where I, I can talk about politics, but also fold it into pop culture and religion and everything else. So uh, I said, yeah, my show is called Caffeinated. And, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's called Caffeinated on the Polypop channel, and we just launched recently. Although by the time this airs, it may be old and canceled already. No. So, uh, so yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy to be a, a part of this, uh, of this family. Welcome. To the well, we're awesome. excited too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. I'm just hoping I get to come back here and hit on all four of you again. <laughs> I hope so too. Okay, Please well, do. Really yeah. Do. yeah. Love it. We all like it, and we want to see Henry Jack um, growing. Yes. I'll be bringing him out here quite a bit. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, we need a babysitter. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that, 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 Anytime. Too. Okay, great. <laughs> great. We you also can. do have a giveaway. Whittleby is going to give, so they're a subscription service. They give you clothes for your baby for on a monthly basis, and um, they are going to give the winner of this giveaway a box of clothes for their child of any age. Okay. So to win our um, giveaway, John has a question to ask you. You have to go to our Facebook page and answer this question. And the question is, should I look at this one? Yes. And the right question there. is, what are you going to do to make sure your child is an individual and not just part of the pack? I love that. That's, That's really good. good. That was good. Thanks. I stole it from an old Jeff Fox or the album. <laughs> You're so good about giving credit when you take your quotes. I rip off from the best. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 questions Bye. below. Let us know what you think. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Later. Later. <laughs>